So I love the fact that the Windows gaming mobile segment is blowing up a ton of devices and there's something for everyone. I mean, you've got uh, devices like the Steam Deck. I know it's not Windows best, but it still plays a lot of PC games. Um, you've got the Steam Deck OLED, you've got the ROG Ally, the Legion Go. Um, Aya Neo has a ton of devices, which brings me to the Aya Neo slide. Now the slide hackings back to an era where you have just unique design and a very different look altogether. And I really love it because at first glance, it's just a regular portable gaming device with a six inch display, 1080p, uh, great structure to it. You've got your D-pad that's really good and comfortable, especially when playing fighting games. Analog sticks that are split, which are nice, of course. You've got your dedicated Aya Neo button, uh, which we'll talk about later. You've got, of course, your shoulder buttons, uh, uh, volume rocker. There's also an additional RC and LC buttons, so there's uh, additional buttons for this. And then you've got vents here at the very top uh, to really cool this device. And now it seems regular until you realize that you can slide that up, you hear that sound, and you basically have a whole new different form factor. You've got a screen that slides up that can tilt up to 30 degree angle, giving you better viewing angle while you're gaming, but you also have a full-fledged keyboard, which can come in very useful, especially uh, on a Windows-based device. You wanna log into your devices, wanna quickly chat, um, you know, that kind of stuff really works out well. But at first glance, this thing is lovely. I think the build quality is really nice. Um, and it does come in two color variants. You've got it in white and you've got it in uh, black. Now you're wondering, okay, how does it stack up against some of the other devices I mentioned? When you look at it side by side, it's pretty much a small device compared to the ROG Ally, which is a seven inch display, it's much smaller. To the Steam Deck OLED, it's also much smaller because it has a larger footprint. The uh, Lenovo Legion Go, that also is a massive device in comparison. And then you look at something like uh, the One X Player, uh, which is a huge display, as also has a, a, an attachable keyboard. That too is massive compared to this. So this has a small footprint. And for me, I enjoy the fact that I could travel around with the device uh, and be able to play comfortably and also watch content. That, uh, the idea of having the display where it actually tilts up allowed me to watch content more effectively uh, while on the road. So again, that was fun to use, but you're going, okay, what about performance? What do we have in here for specs? So the Ioneo slide comes with uh, AMD Ryzen 7840U and starts off with 16 gigabytes of RAM, 512 gigabytes of storage. And that goes all the way up to 64 gigabytes of RAM and four terabytes of storage. Now, you can get it now. Uh, they've got an Indiegogo going on and they have early bird pricing. And that early bird pricing starts at $699 for what I mentioned, all the way to $1299. Uh, but once that's done, it will go to regular pricing. The stats at $899 and goes all the way up to $1599. So, you know, if you want to jump in early for this stuff, it is possible. Now, I won't bore you with benchmarks because, you know, this thing still runs really well, but I'm going to show you some of the gameplay sessions that I've actually done with this and what kind of performance we're getting. Because again, at the end of the day, you want to be playing and enjoying the games you're playing here. So with a device like this, usually I play a lot of Street Fighter on the road with it just because it's so much easier. And again, that's where that D-pad comes in. Really good in games like that. And I was able to play Street Fighter medium settings at around 59, 55 to 59 frames per second. Really solid. Sometimes it got to 60, uh, no glitches there, which was also really nice to see. Uh, then going to an older game like Shadow of the Tomb Raider. Now Shadow of the Tomb Raider was interesting because I was able to also run um, Intel XCSS which is quite impressive. Uh, and I got better performance there, uh, almost closer to 60 frames per second. Uh, with that at medium settings, if I went low, of course I, I would definitely max that out, but I just wanted to try something other than low settings here. And it worked really well, played very smoothly. That again was impressive. And then a game like, of course, um, Doom Eternal, that running at medium settings, so I was able to get 110 frames per second. If I went lower, I could get more higher frame rate, but you get the point. 110 is enough for your needs in Doom Eternal, especially in the display this side. Now that display looks really good and vibrant. So whatever you're putting on this display looks really good, also looks really solid. Now I've had some, I've seen some complaints about the wobbliness of the device. It does wobble but I don't think you're gonna be gaming this way. 
I don't think anyone's going to be doing this while gaming. I mean, you might have sessions where you're moving about and then you move forward, but honestly, it's fine. I'm not too concerned about that unless, of course, you're doing this. But again, you can slide the device down and still game effectively with just the screen right there. Now, this device also comes with a fingerprint sensor, which is pretty handy, especially uh, for Windows-based device. So you can tap that, sign into your device. You don't have to actually log in in any form or fashion. So before we get to more gameplay, what about the keyboard? How effective is that keyboard? Now, first thing, you cannot use this keyboard to game. It's just not built for that. This is a typing keyboard. It's got a very flat, flush area, so it's not raised keys. You more have to push into the keys themselves. Now, with the keyboard, you do have to um, take some time to get used to it, but it works well, and I tend to use just two fingers to type with it. It's just an easier format for me to use, but it still works effectively well for those kind of quick messages, logging into uh, accounts, uh, that sort of thing. Don't feel, I don't think this is a keyboard you'd be doing a lot of major typing on, but again, it allows that quick access altogether. Now, in terms of audio, um, the speakers are really good for its size. So how about you guys take a listen? So in terms of audio, uh, the speakers sound really good, uh, but what about sound from the fan? Is it loud, is it overbearing while you're gaming? I don't think so. I think it can get, it can get a little bit loud, but not something that's crazy that will break off your gameplay. It's definitely not as loud as a gaming laptop uh, in that regards, but take a listen for yourself. So a cool thing that IONEO has worked on over the years is their gaming software, which has been greatly improved. That orange button, you can tap that to access that, and you do have a couple of things here. You can go in to check, check change the TDP of the device. Usually I leave it at uh, 25, works pretty well. You can expand the uh, uh, FPS ratings. You can also have a performance overlay if you want to, uh, that kind of thing. And also you can actually set the game up for either AAA games, retro games, normal games, that kind of stuff. More options into like just the customability of the display, um, some motion customability controllers as well. So again, it's pretty flexible on what you can actually do with uh, the software uh, itself. Speaking of retro games, uh, just to show you one example here, PSP game God of War uh, Chains of Olympus runs really well on this. Uh, I was getting uh, sometimes 70 frames per second, a little higher uh, with the settings that you see on screen. It handles the game well, and I think it will run your retro games uh, quite well. Looking at other games like um, Red Dead Redemption 2, that also got some really solid performance all across the board. And I think you will find a lot of games will play well on this device. That is not the issue because we know this processor can handle stuff. The main thing is, are you looking for something that looks like a standard gaming device or can change into something like this? That is the question. And does it actually work well as a device that has a slide out keyboard? And I think it does. Um, I think that it just brings a very unique look and take to it. Yes, it is a six inch display and that might be a difference breaker for some people. But for me, I do like it because it's compact, it's easy to carry around. Uh, there is a carrying case uh, that you can get with it as well. It's $29.99 uh, on the uh, Indiegogo page. I've been using the Air Neo Air case, uh, which is also a much smaller device. Uh, and that kind of works, at least for me for now. But overall, I do like this device. Now, my only big gripe is the price point because for a lot of gamers going up to about $1,500 uh, $1, at its official retail price is a bit steep on this and starting at $899 with just 512 gigabytes of storage. That being said though, you can get the $899 version and you can upgrade it yourself. It would take a, a full size NVMe if you want to and you can swap that out and expand it yourself at a cheaper price point. So let me know guys, what do you think about the Aya Neo slide? Is this something you, you think it's worth picking up for you? Um, do you think it's a great performer? I do like the performance of this. It's definitely better than uh, the 
uh, Steam Deck OLED in some instances. Again, I'm getting 110 frames per second on Doom Eternal. I haven't gotten that on the Steam Deck OLED, but then again, it is a six inch display instead of the much larger display those other devices have. So if you guys have any questions or any comments, let me know. Don't forget to like, share, subscribe, and always enjoy your entertainment.